Well, new data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that inflation is actually rising much faster than virtually any economist in the country predicted. Overall, we learned today, the year-over-year -year gain in the consumer price index is up 4.2%. That's the fastest jump in 13 years since the 2008 meltdown. The rise in what's called the core consumer price index, that excludes food and energy, is the highest in 40 years. It's 1981. Peter Schiff is an economist and the CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. He joins us tonight to explain what this means. Peter Schiff, thanks so much for coming out. What does this mean and should we be concerned about it? You should be concerned. And as I said on the program last time, this is a tax. It is the inflation tax. And if you look at how much the cost of living went up, measured by the CPI, in the first four months of this year, it's 2%. So if you triple that to annualize it, we have consumer prices rising at 6% annually. But if you look at the monthly numbers, every month it accelerates. So if you extrapolate the trend of the first four months of this year for the entire year, you're going to get a 20% increase in consumer prices in 2021. So, I mean, because our financial system is a global system, other countries, China most notably, buy U.S. treasuries with an expectation of return. If the value of the U.S. dollar starts falling as quickly as these numbers suggest it is, why would any country inv invest in U.S. bonds and government bonds? I mean, doesn't this threaten well, to cause, you know, shakeup? Well, they won't. Yeah, they're going to be selling U.S. Treasuries. I mean, anybody that can connect right. these dots is going to be selling U.S. Treasuries. And the problem is there's a lot of U.S. Treasuries to be sold. You know, and they talk a lot about the shortage of goods. The real problem is the surplus of money. You know, whenever you print a lot of money, right. it's always a good shortage because the Federal Reserve can print all the money they want. They don't, but they don't print products to buy with the money. So we have all this money being printed. We're not producing a lot. People are sitting at home cashing unemployment checks. This is a tax. It is an inflation tax, a Biden tax, whatever you want to call it. But when Joe Biden says that, don't worry, only people that make over $400,000 a year are going to have to pay higher taxes to fund all these programs, he's lying because every American is going to pay the inflation tax and it's going to hit the middle class and the poor the hardest. So I don't understand, since you, you just described it in the clearest possible way. When you print a ton of money, the value of that money falls. It's more money chasing fewer goods, fewer people working to make those goods. Of course, you're going to wind up where we are today with massive disruptions to the labor market and, and spiking inflation. Why didn't any of the geniuses making these policies anticipate this? Look, e even the so-called geniuses at the Federal Reserve, they keep telling us not to worry because, according to them, it's all transitory. But these are the same guys that told us not to worry about the subprime mortgage market. Remember, early on, Ben Bernanke said, oh, don't worry about subprime. It's contained. Well, now they're saying, don't worry about inflation. It's transitory. Inflation is as transitory now as, uh, as uh, the subprime market was contained. And this inflation crisis is not only going to be worse than the financial crisis, it's going to be worse than the pandemic because the government's cure is what's going to kill the economy, not the disease itself. That's right. Nicely put. I, this is worth worrying about, I think. If you print too much money, it's worthless. That is a law of nature. Peter Schiff, I appreciate you coming on tonight. I hope you'll come back.